As photographers, one of the first things we learn is to always shoot in RAW. That gives us the most data to work with, the most we can edit our images with. I talk about it all the time here on this channel. But what if I told you that the future might be shooting in JPEG? Let me show you. On the left, we have a Fuji RAW from the X106. On the right, we have a JPEG XL converted DNG. And let's zoom into the image and let me show you just how insane this is. So we're only at 100% here, but if we zoom into, let's just go to, let's go 400% and start looking at that. Now, if I go to the highlights here, again, through YouTube compression, you're not gonna be able to really see the difference, but I'm gonna show you how to do this yourself and you can test all of it. If I go to the shadows here, let's just keep zooming in. Here's 800%. Do you see a difference between these two images? Probably not. Let's do 1600%. We are pretty much at the pixel level. I'm just gonna let it sit right here. You can get an idea of what the shadows look like and there's a little bit of highlights in the image. But from my look and being able to see it on my screen, the differences here are extremely minimal. We're talking like not even a percentage. If I go right here, you might end up being able to see the fringes between pixels, that there's a slight difference in the JPEG XL version. But here is the kicker. This is what's incredible about this, is if I show you the file sizes here, this RAF image is 87 megabytes. That's how large the raw image is. The JPEG XL version is 6.9 megabytes. That is basically like a 85, 90% reduction in size, yet there is basically no reduction in image quality. Absolutely insane. And again, don't just trust me, don't trust YouTube, go try it for yourself on your own images, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a second. But I'll show you a Canon CR3. On the left-hand side, we have the Canon RAW from the R5. On the right-hand side, we have the converted JPEG XL DNG. To give you an idea of what these file sizes are, this one is about 52 megabytes as a RAW and 6.3 megabytes as the converted DNG. Now, we're just going to start at 1600%. Well, you can't even see the moon at that size, so let's go to 800%. Do you see a difference in these two images? You probably won't be able to through YouTube compression, even at 4K. But from my eyes, on my computer, the differences are absurdly minimal. Like, legitimately, it is so hard for me to find even the slightest difference at the ultra 1600% level that if I was shooting in this JPEG XL format, I could convert all of my images right now to this format and be totally happy. I don't think that you're going to miss anything. So before I show you how to do it really quick, you're probably thinking JPEG. What does that mean necessarily? Does that mean I can't change the white balance? Does that mean I can't recover the shadows or the highlights as much? No, it does not. This is still a DNG file. It's just using a payload of a JPEG XL compression. And the important thing about JPEG XL is just because it has JPEG in the name doesn't necessarily mean it is JPEG. JPEG, the industry standard, started in the 80s. It was developed in the 80s, and we've been using it ever since. JPEG XL is basically working off of that and has far better algorithmic methods to compress images. However, its standard, where JPEG is limited to 8-bit, JPEG XL can go up to 32 bit and can do like a Terra pixel, which I think is 1 billion pixels by 1 billion pixels, just an absurd size image that will basically future proof it for a very long time. But it can also handle things like HDR and different color gamuts. And as you're seeing here, it can handle all the information of a raw file. So let me show you raising the shadows and darkening the highlights just so you can see that all the information is there. So to do that, I'm actually going to go back to the Fuji image just because it has more dynamics in it. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're gonna go to the develop tab and we're going to increase the exposure of our RAF file by about, let's just do three stops. And then I'm gonna sync that with the other file. So now they're both plus three stops. And I'm gonna go back to compare. Again, the RAW on the left, the JPEG XL version on the right, and let's go to our shadows. Now, this is where you might be able to see a difference, but genuinely, I cannot see a difference. Like there's this pixelation here in the shadows of the tree, but it's also there in the JPEG XL version. Everything in the shadows is there. I can recover basically everything in this image pretty substantially. Now let's do the exact same thing we did before, but instead we're going to reduce the exposure by three stops and we're gonna sync it with the other image. And we're gonna go back to compare. And now let's take a look at our highlight areas in the image and let that load. And again, I cannot 
see a difference between these two images. It is very minimal. These JPEG XL images are absolutely incredible. Alex, so, your posture is so bad. Uh, I know, these dang Airbnb chairs are killing my back. I cannot wait for us to get back to the States so I can use my FlexiSpot C5 chair, which also happens to be today's sponsor. If you're like me and spend most of your time sitting at a computer, you likely suffer from things like back pain, posture issues, and overall fatigue while either working or editing your photos. Before living on the road, I use a standing desk every single day. It's one of the things I miss the most from my office and cannot recommend them enough. FlexiSpot sent us over the E7 standing desk. This thing is strong enough to lift Sophia. Okay, that's not saying much. It's also strong enough to lift both of us. It includes a module to set four different heights. For example, I've set button one for sitting height and button two for standing height. For all the times you choose to sit down, FlexiSpot also offers affordable ergonomic chairs. They sent the C5 over which has adjustable lumbar support, is very comfy, and most important for me, adjustable armrests. FlexiSpot has recently released their C7 Pro Max series, which gives even more flexibility to adjusting your wrist comfort. Working long hours at a desk can destroy your wrists. So having the ability to adjust the desk height and the chair height allows for a much healthier posture at the desk to prevent wrist injuries. Both their C7 and C7 Pro Max also have a hidden footrest for those times you want to relax a little bit, along with more adjustments to perfect your ergonomic comfort. FlexiSpot has a ton of options for chairs that give you different sizes, material types, configurations, and features. They accomplish all of this while remaining affordable and budget-friendly based on your needs. So check out the C7 and C7 Pro Max chairs using my link in the description, and you'll get a discount on anything you order, and it also helps support this channel. If you spend a bunch of time on a computer like me, sincerely invest in yourself and get an ergonomic chair or standing desk. You gotta really pixel peep, and every once in a while you can find some little arbitrary highlight or something that would never resolve when you're printing an image or anything like that. But for the most part, again, you can test this yourself. Don't trust me. Let me show you how to do that right now, that you can do this to your own images right now. All right, so we're gonna convert this raw image that I took on my R5. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna right click your image, go to export up here. And then I've already created a preset, but I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. So let me just select one of my old presets. You wanna make sure that you have hard drive selected on here. Select wherever you want the image to go. And the most important thing is to come down here to file settings. And under file settings, you're gonna select, you're not gonna select JPEG XL. That's gonna to export to an actual JPEG XL image that you would put on your website or something like that. Well, don't do that because Chrome still doesn't support it. It's a long story, but for the sake of this video, you wanna select DNG. Now, the biggest thing you have to make sure here is that you have Camera Raw 15.3 or later. That's where they introduced JPEG XL into their DNGs. So you're gonna select that, and then you wanna select Use Lossy Compression. If you don't select this, it's still gonna to convert to a DNG. It's just gonna be a much larger file size, and it's not gonna be using JPEG XL. So we're gonna hit Use Lossy Compression, and that's it. You don't wanna resize the image. You just wanna leave it as a DNG, you wanna uncheck all the stuff that's down here, and then obviously just make sure it goes to where you want to. So I'm gonna select my preset. All that's gonna do is I have a custom thing where it's gonna rename the image to have JPEG XL on it, and then also it's gonna put it in the correct folder, and then it's also going to add it to my catalog automatically. All right, so once you've exported that and you have it back in, you can take a look and compare your images side by side by pressing the C button in Lightroom. And on the again, on the left, I have the Canon RAW original image and on the right I have the JPEG XL image. We are at 800% and I guarantee you that through YouTube you're probably not going to know the difference between the two. And just to look, let's take a look at what the file sizes of these images are. It looks like this image is 55 megabytes originally and now with the compression is 19.8 megabytes. Now that's much higher than it was for the other images, but that's also likely because of just how much is in this image. I selected this image for a reason. It's a much more complex image. There's not a lot of gradients. There's not a lot of sky in the image like in this one. It's a far more lush, full image, full of details. And again, I've searched through some of these images and I really can't tell a difference. Now you might be asking, okay, what's the catch? What's the drawback of using this? The reality is there isn't that much of a drawback. One of the things you do lose when you convert to a DNG specifically is the mosaic data that's in the raw image. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna to go to loop view, we're gonna zoom back out, and I'm going to show you over here in your metadata, if you select DNG, you can see this thing that says mosaic data. And if I click on my DNG file, you'll see where it says lossy compression, yes, that's because we made it a JPEG XL lossy compression, but down here it says mosaic data, no. What that's used for is typically for things like AI denoise in Lightroom or DXO Pure Raw, 
meaning you cannot use those pieces of software on your converted JPEG XL images. However, what you can do is convert those images after you've reduced the noise in them using whatever software that you typically use and turn them into JPEG XL images. So for example, this is a Lightroom reduced noise image. What I'm gonna do is just go through export, go to export, and I'm just going to use my shortcut that I've made here and I'm gonna export. That's gonna convert my AI reduced noise image that Lightroom made into the new JPEG XL DNG. And now we have it here, so let's bring it over here and then we're gonna compare them side by side. Before I zoom in, let's just take a look at the file size. We were originally at 96.9 megabytes for that Lightroom AI reduced noise image. And now the JPEG XL image is 15 megabytes. Let's see if we can tell a difference. Let's zoom all the way in. On the left, we have the Lightroom reduced noise. On the right, we have the JPEG XL. And you are gonna see a slight difference here. But what it is really doing is actually there's almost less grain on the left-hand side in our reduced noise image compared to the JPEG image. But all this artifacting you see at 800% because of the reduction in noise and also the edit I've applied to the image is all still almost represented in the JPEG XL version. Again, I really can't tell a difference, especially in this really dense foliage on this image. And this is something that you can do to the images after you've already reduced the noise. And no matter how far I seem to push the image, it seems to work regardless of how small the file size is. It's absolutely wild. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna compress this already AI reduced noise image into a JPEG XL while I talk about the practicality of using this right now. Because you could be wondering, well, this is all great, but I can't shoot in JPEG XL on my camera. So how is this useful now? Well, the thing is, let's imagine like you're a wedding photographer, for example, and you outsource your editing to other people and you're sending them thousands, maybe 2,000, 4,000 images for them to cull through or edit. Now you can compress them and save 90% of the data, have them edit the image and send them back so you can apply it to your raw images. That roundabout transaction will save a lot of data. And even with high speed internet, that's a ton of data. A lot of the times people working remotely, like me, don't have that fast of internet. So that's a really important practical thing that can happen right now. Or if you're someone like me, I back up all my images to the cloud and I have five terabytes of cloud storage that is basically full. And if I can just convert everything to JPEG XL, I could save 80, 85% of my cloud storage and make it last for the next 10 or 15 years, no matter how many images I end up taking, because that percentage of savings is massive. So there are practical uses right now. I only just named two. You might have other ones. Maybe you don't have as much hard drive space and you want to compress things down. Because reality is, you know, when we take images, let's say we take 50 images of a scene, we usually only end up editing one, two, maybe three of those images. So what you could do is just compress the other 47 images down to JPEG XL, leave the raws for the ones you didn't end up editing. And if you ever go back and find new light in those images, you still have the JPEG XL versions, which are, as you can see, and you'll be able to see if you're in your own testing, pretty much identical. But maybe that thing in our mind where it's like, nope, I have to have the biggest file size and the biggest raw. You can still have peace of mind because you still have your original edits of the ones you chose. That's something else you can do. Okay, really quick, taking a look at this image side by side. On the left, we have the noise reduced 100 megabyte image. On the right, let's get the right one correct, we have the JPEG XL image. If I zoom in here, you're probably wondering, do I lose any of the grain? Do I lose anything in the shadows? As you can tell, there is a little bit of noise almost removed in the sky here where the aurora is. But for the most part, all the details are here. I mean, I'm just absolutely blown away by this. There's a little bit more grain here in the AI reduced noise image. But what's the file size difference? Let's take a look here. 52 megabytes for the original, 92 megabytes for the AI reduced image, eight megabytes for the JPEG XL image. That is just absolutely mind blowing results. So the next thing is, well, how does this change the future? And the reality is us as photographers, we have to ask for it. We need to pressure camera manufacturers to put this into our cameras. It could mean faster buffer rates. It could mean we don't need super extensive CF Express cards because the file sizes that it's sending to the card would be so much smaller that you could just shoot on an old card. And I know for the people out there that shoot sports and stuff, buying those expensive CF Express cards, that storage is not cheap. So if you could imagine only having to shoot on an old SD card because you chose JPEG XL compression to shoot your images, you could get away with 
higher burst rates, higher frame rates. The, honestly, the sky is limitless. And again, don't take my word for it from this YouTube video. Go try it yourself. Go look at your own images. I guarantee you, you're probably going to be blown away. Anyways, I would love to know what you think. If you test this on some old RAWs, because I really only did it on some more newer cameras, did you have the same results? What about, I'm thinking medium format. I wanted to test that, but I didn't have any medium format images because those are huge files that probably compress down really well. Any thoughts down below, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, maybe subscribe if you loved it. There's gotta be a rainbow out there somewhere. We just gotta go find them. Later. Cool.